If you've ever been to a zoo and paid close attention to the captive animals there, there's a good chance you've witnessed some of them engaging in seemingly unnatural and repetitive behaviors. From polar bears swimming in endless circles, tigers pacing along the same worn path for hours, or elephants swaying endlessly to a seemingly inaudible rhythm. This phenomenon is sometimes referred to as zoocosis and is thought to be a psychological symptom of replacing an animal's natural environment with a man-made enclosure. Essentially, it's believed that these animals have developed mental health issues and are in a state of distress due to their small enclosures, unnatural and constant exposure to humans, and other characteristics of captivity that are unlike their natural habitat. If you are an empath, then you'll likely agree with me when I say that zoocosis is heart-wrenching, but from an evolutionary perspective, the phenomenon makes quite a bit of sense. These animals have been evolving for millions of years to be well adapted to their natural environment. Elephants, for example, have evolved the capability to walk tens of kilometers per day in search of life-sustaining food and water. Orcas in the wild traverse whole oceans and need social interaction with other members of their species. In captivity, these animals can no longer fulfill these needs that are essential to their identity, the needs that they've been hardwired to fulfill through a long and arduous evolutionary process. The result is arguably mental illness. What if I told you that humans aren't so different in this regard from captive zoo animals? We too have spent the last several million years evolving to be fine-tuned to the environment we found ourselves in. And what if removing a human from her natural environment, like an animal at a zoo, has the propensity to seed mental illness? Perhaps this seems like an overly simple explanation to a complex problem, but hear me out. Mental health problems like depression, anxiety, and addiction are on the rise as humans continue to create a world that looks less and less like anything our distant ancestors would recognize. For example, some scientists have theorized that our ancient ancestors sustained themselves by utilizing a form of hunting known as persistence hunting, which involves the human hunter chasing prey over vast distances in the heat of the day. If this theory is correct, it suggests that humans evolved to depend on the ability to traverse, within a single day, great distances in the wilderness to have unlimited access to all the land around them, expanding out for dozens of miles in all directions. Compare this limitless access to the land that our ancestors enjoyed to what we have today. If you live in the city, you have the legal right to be physically present in your apartment, or if you're lucky, your house and your yard. Beyond this, sure, there may be a few public spaces like parks, grocery stores, and public roads, but that's about it. Mile after mile, we have largely surrounded ourselves with private property that is inaccessible to the vast majority of people. In the countryside, you can drive for miles the open landscape taunting you with the facade of open space. But the truth is that you can't explore these fields, forests, and streams without fear of legal consequences. You are in a zoo, or perhaps more aptly, a prison of society's creation. Like a caged animal, one of your most basic evolutionary needs to have access to the land and water has been stripped away from you. The result is a heightened predisposition to zoocosis, 
or in anthropological terms, mental illness. This idea that we've created an unnatural environment that runs counter to our evolutionary history and that which we need to sustain our mental health goes far beyond an altered landscape. To come up with other examples, one must only explore our ancestral history and compare past conditions to current conditions. Past humans were dependent on their families and tribes for survival, and this fact is likely the reason we have evolved the emotion we know as loneliness. If past humans found themselves without their peers, loneliness acted as a motivator to link up with others and hence increase their chances of survival and reproduction. Today, we socialize less than ever before, and when we do, it is often in the form of a text, an unarguably unnatural form of communication. People no longer need to depend on and socialize daily with a tribe of 50 to 100 people to survive. But our evolutionary history doesn't care about the rules of modern society. And the consequence is our mental health suffers. Perhaps this is why we are so drawn to social media platforms such as Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. We are seeking and deeply crave a sense of community with our friends and family, something that ancient humans once possessed but that modern society has not made room for. This list of ways we have modified our environment in a way that is at odds with our evolutionary history is extensive. Staring at a computer and phone screen all day? Sitting in an office chair for 40 hours every week? Or spending only a limited amount of our time outdoors are just a few of the unnatural attributes of these cages we've created for ourselves. And the science agrees. Take for example this study by Benfeld et al, which found that participants who were exposed to natural sounds had better mood recovery than those who were exposed to the same sounds overlaid with anthropogenic noises. Or this study by Boger and Meyer that found that crime and violence may be reduced when cities have more green spaces. Or a study by Zhang and Chen that found that evidence shows a consistent positive correlation between physical activity and happiness. In all these examples, the result is the same. Returning to a more natural state results in better mental health. The truth is, if we want to progress as a society, we need to do so in a way that is more aligned with our biological needs. We can't help the environment that our ancestors evolved in and trying to ignore it when designing the way modern society functions is like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Sure, we can force it, but at what cost? <laughs>